Okay, in this video we are learning how to interpret an earned value graph. Well basically an earned value graph is just like a baseline S-curve uh, with a little bit more information on it. So if you recall from the previous videos when we were doing our baseline S-curves, it's just a cumulative project cost over the duration of the project. And so as we went, uh, we, divide, we generally find a trend where we get some curve that has something like this and levels out there at the end. And let's just make sure that lines up with the scheduled end of our project, just like that. All right, so this was the cumulative cost from our S curves, uh, but this is also what we call BCWS when our earned value analysis, BCWS. This is the budgeted cost of work scheduled. So if we were to have a table of dependencies and then uh, make a Gantt chart off of it, and then again, if you recall from the previous videos, uh, have the stacked Gantt chart, uh, and then we would be getting this this S curve below it by adding up the daily costs of each activity as we went on. Uh, this is also that is the budgeted cost of work scheduled because the the Gantt chart is what we're expecting the project to be, uh, but sometimes it doesn't always go as planned. And with that said, if you recall from the last video, uh, we were talking about report dates, and we had the budgeted cost of work performed and the actual cost of work performed. So let's say we have some arbitrary point along our our project here where we have a report date. So we'll draw that in just like this. And if you recall from our our last video when we were dealing with report dates, uh, not only do we have the budgeted cost of work scheduled, but we'll have the actual cost of the work performed, right? It might not always be exactly what we had planned. So let's draw in another line. Um, maybe we'll have something like this. Uh, and this here will be our actual cost of work performed. And then let's change colors. And we also get one other, we are able to get one other value out of our reporting, uh, our field reports, and that's the budgeted cost of work performed. So let's draw in some other line uh, that goes up like this. Uh, this could be our budgeted cost of work performed. Okay, so the way I drew it, sometimes BCWP will be above BCWS, sometimes it'll be below, sometimes ACWP will be above. I just picked some random orientation for them all to fit together. And so if you recall, we were able, with these three values, uh, we have the budgeted cost of work scheduled, the actual cost of work performed, and the budgeted cost of work performed. Essential in our earned value analysis, but if you recall, uh, we're able to get the cost, per, the cost performance index, the schedule performance index, the cost variance, and the schedule variance, uh, and they're just right here. And what these formulas say is that the indices, if either of them is greater than one, that's a good thing. So for the cost performance index, if it's greater than one, you are under budget. If the schedule performance index is greater than one, you are ahead of schedule. If, uh, now if they're less than one, what this tells you is from the cost, if the cost performance index is less than one, uh, that's not a good thing, you get this brown face, you are over budget, and for schedule performance index, again, that's a bad thing to be less than one, uh, you'll be actually behind schedule. Now with the variances here, same thing, uh, except we're, we're, uh, the, the point that we're looking at is zero. So if the cost variance, if either of them actually are over zero, that's a good thing, but in the case of the cost variance, that means uh, exactly the same as when this one was over one, uh, it means that you are under budget. For the schedule variance, if you're over zero, if you have a positive value for the schedule variance, that means that you are ahead of schedule. Uh, and conversely, if you're under zero for either of these for cost variance, if you're under zero, if you have a negative value for CV, then that means you are over budget. And if you have a negative value for uh, schedule variance, that means that you are behind schedule. But we know all of that from previous videos about specifically calculating CPI or SPI or so on. But the point of this video is how to interpret an earned value graph. So right away, if you just look at something like this, uh, like I said, BCWP, ACWP, like these could all be switched around. Um, first of all, the only one that can go to the very end of the scheduled project, or the scheduled end of the project, is BCWS, the budgeted cost of the work scheduled. Because you can budget the cost of the work scheduled. You can predict how much it's going to cost, but you don't know anything about the work that's actually being performed until you have a field report done. So these, there's no way that these guys can go beyond the reporting date, right? Because the work scheduled and the work performed are very different things. Anyways, the point was, uh, how can we quickly figure out if we are ahead of schedule or behind schedule by just looking at this graph? Well, we know uh, some of these ratios will actually be able to give us, we, we can do it with a ratio or we can do it with a simple subtraction here. I'll just do it with the ratios. Uh, so if we have a BCWP that is greater than a BCWS, well this is the ratio that they are looking at. 
And so if, we have, if BCWP is some number that's bigger on top divided by some number that's smaller on the bottom, that will give us a number that's greater than 1. Uh, it just comes down to simple division and math. Uh, and if we get a value that's greater than 1, we will be ahead of schedule because we'll get our smiley face here. Versus if our BCWP was less than BCWS, so in that, for that to happen, this BCWP line would actually have to be down probably where this blue line is. Um, then the value here at our reporting date, we'd have this value, which would be higher than whatever the BCWP would be. Uh, so we would have BCWS would be a greater number, BCWP would be smaller than BCWS. So that fraction right there would give you a number that's less than one, indicating something's going on here, indicating that we're behind schedule. Now we can apply the same basic reasoning to figure out if we are above budget or below budget. So using now for budget, we need the CPI, which we need the values of BCWP and ACWP. So ACWP, BCWP. So if we have, let's look at this, how it is right now. We have BCWP is greater than ACP, ACWP at a reporting date, right? This one has a higher cumulative cost than this one, or it's reading out at a higher cost. Uh, so if we have a bigger number divided by a smaller number, we will get a number that is greater than one. And that means that we will be getting a smiley face here, which indicates that we are below budget. We're under budget. That's a good thing. We don't want to be over budget. But now if you think about it, if we switch to these, so imagine if ACWP came up and it was actually a higher value than the BCWP, that, mean we would, that means we would have a higher number on the bottom, smaller number on the top, uh, and if you have a number divided by a number that's greater than it, then you're going to be getting a number, uh, yeah, the fraction, it will, it will turn out to be a decimal that's less than one, uh, which will indicate that we are over budget. So I encourage you to try this with any numbers you can think of. Let's use a really simple example. Let's say maybe uh, BCWP is $4,000, $4, and our ACWP is, let's say, $2,000. Well, then if we come over here to our CPI, we'd have 4,000 divided by 2,000. That's going to give us a CPI of 2, which is greater than 1. Hence, we are going to be in a good position. We'll be under budget. But if they were switched, if actual cost of work performed was twice that of the, the BCWP, the budgeted cost of work performed, well, then this would be flipped, and we'd actually be getting a CPI of 0.5. Uh, therefore, we would be able to know that our project would be over budget because we're getting a number for CPI that's less than one. Same thing, we can do exactly the same thing with SPI uh, when we're comparing the BCWP and the BCWS.